What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And now it's time for episode two of Worship Wars. So for episode two of Worship Wars, uh, given that I've been reflecting on uh, my mom's death, uh, I thought I would take two hymns that are associated with death. Uh, namely, uh, this great song. And we're going to compare it to a hymn of the same theme. Now, already you can see some major differences, uh, but like like in the last Worship Wars, we're not going to deal with the melodies of it, especially because uh, the melody for I Can Only Imagine is very intense and very emotionally stirring, while uh, Behold a Host Array in White is... I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's not as intense. The, and and there are hymns where the melody is just lush and vibrant and intense. And then there are hymns where the music is subdued and the lyrical content really carries the emotional weight of the hymn. So we're unplugged again. We're cutting the music and we're just doing the lyrics. And if you want a really good book on why I think it's important to, to talk about these worship wars, uh, I would recommend this one. I got yelled at. I read it while I was deployed and I got yelled at for reading it. It's called Why I Left the Contemporary Christian Music Movement. I forgot the title there for a second. So it's Confessions of a Former Worship Leader. So this is not just me. It's not just straight from the horse's mouth when I talk about the difference between contemporary worship uh, and historic liturgical worship. It's not just, it is straight from the horse's mouth when I talk about it, but it's also <clears throat> in a much more profound way, straight from the horse's mouth from this guy, because he was a worship leader and it's eye-opening the things that happen uh, behind the scenes to create, woo to create um, that authentic, spontaneous God experience. So let's just get right to it. We're comparing uh, two hymns that have to do with dying and going to heaven, uh, or two songs. Uh, so <laughs> there's one song that was written in about 10 minutes. Took about 10 minutes, I guess. <laughs> and there's another hymn uh, that we're going to go over as well. So let's get started. Let's do I Can Only Imagine. And like last time, if we don't have a technical device in our hand, we're not going to draw in the youth. So I'm cool. I'm hip. I'm with the times here. Um, so let's go. I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine... I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes, when I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Hey, yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Hey, yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. 
I can only imagine. No wonder it only took 10 minutes to write this song. It took about 10 minutes, I guess. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> now, again, simple lyrics, and this is this is a recurring theme. And this is not necessarily a praise song, but this is a very popular song. Uh, and it's popular, especially in funerals for mainland American Protestants, to have these popular songs be played, kind of like weddings, where there's popular love songs that people they like to have family members sing or whatever. Same with, with I Can Only Imagine. It is a song that people associate with their family members dying, and the melody is beautiful, it is intense, it is emotionally stirring, but as we've seen from lyrical content alone, it's actually hollow. There's not really much there. There's no substance there. And the danger when it comes to theology is wondering and pos and making kind of definitive statements from that which you have created in your own imagination. It's incredibly dangerous. The book of Revelation is really clear about what heaven is like. And we can have a, while there's still room to imagine, I suppose, there is a lot of detail about what it's like in heaven, what the saints who have gone before us are experiencing as they wait for the resurrection. So without any further ado, given uh, reference to the book of Revelation, let's go old school, let's open up our hymnal to Behold a Host Arrayed in White, Whoops, which um, was written by someone who lived uh, in and around the 1700s, 16 to 1700s. So again, old hymn. <laughs> Behold a host arrayed in white, like thousand snow-clad mountains bright. With palms they stand, who is this band, before the throne of light? These are the saints of glorious fame who from the great affliction came. And in the flood of Jesus' blood, are cleansed from guilt and shame. They now serve God both day and night. They sing their songs in endless light. Their anthems ring as they all sing with angels shining bright. Despised and scorned, they sojourned here, but now how glorious they appear. Those martyrs stand a priestly band, God's throne forever near. On earth they wept, through bitter years, now God has wiped away their tears, transformed their strife to heavenly life, and freed them from their fears. They now enjoy the Sabbath rest, the heavenly banquet of the blessed. The Lamb, their Lord at festive board, himself is host and guest. O blessed saints in bright array, now safely home in endless day, Extol the Lord who with his word sustained you on the way. The steep and narrow path you trod, you toiled and sowed the word abroad. Rejoice and bring your fruits and sing before the throne of God. The myriad angels raise their song, O saints, sing with that happy throng. Lift up one voice, let heaven rejoice in our Redeemer's song. <clears throat> Well, there's some lyrical content there. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's that time of year again where I always have a tickle in my throat. So there's definitely a lyrical difference between I can only imagine and behold a host arrayed in white. And I, admittedly, most liturgical worshiping Christians don't really even know that behold a host arrayed in white even exists. There is a Sunday. It's, it's the Sunday closest to November 1st. It's All Saints Sunday. Uh, that, be, that being because uh, November 1st is All Saints Day. Uh, and the church recognizes that she doesn't just exist on earth. She, rec she recognizes that she exists in heaven and on earth at the same time. The, the whole company, uh, the whole host of saints, the saints that have gone before, that great cloud of witnesses that has gone before us, that we are the church together. Uh, and there's a beautiful hymn that we will sing, and I will uh, do it on this on this program. It's uh, for all the saints who from their labors rest. And that's that's kind of the most popular hymn, and it is a beautiful hymn. But that's the favorite. And so most people don't know about Behold a Host Arrayed in White. But the marked difference that <clears throat> Behold a Host Arrayed in White doesn't wonder about what we don't know about heaven. For the sake of comforting 
uh, a grieving conscience, it proclaims boldly what we do know about being in heaven. And not just <clears throat> kind of a vague reference to Jesus. Oh, Jesus is going to be there who in the flood of Jesus' blood are cleansed from guilt and shame. This is the good, rock-solid confession of our faith. That our, our hope is built on nothing less, uh, to quote another hymn, uh, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So it references that sacrificial blood of Christ as the reason that they are there. There is no, I mean, let's be fair. Let's close this out and ask, could a non-Christian sing, I can only imagine? Yeah, they could, actually, because non-Christians tend to be quite mystical, and when it fits and suits their emotions, yeah, they'll make a reference to Jesus. You know, oh, of course, you know, Jesus is up in heaven. You know, that's just kind of what we've always been taught, and deep down in our souls, we all know uh, the truth. We, it's just some people are better at denying it than others. Could an atheist sing, Behold a host arrayed in white? No. They can't. They can't at all. Um... And the comfort, the, the dynamic, the picture that Behold a Host Arrayed in White paints is markedly different from I Can Only Imagine. I Can Only Imagine had maybe one or two moderately pseudo-profound thoughts uh, and then just repeated them over and over again. Or as Behold a Host Arrayed in White, clinging to one melody repeated three times, the lyrics change. And there's so much depth to Behold a Host Arrayed in White. And... And to talk about emotions for a minute here, um, I have to say that emotions should not be removed from worship, but emotions are not the center of worship. Do people get emotional when they sing I Can Only Imagine? Of course they do. Heck, even listening to it in preparation for this video, I, uh, the melody, not the lyrics, was very emotional. But when I first sang on All Saints Sunday, Behold a host arrayed in white. I could not make it through. I cried. Like, just sobbed. Could not sing. Because the emotional response I had to the lyrical content, which proclaimed the promises of God from his word, were deeply comforting. And that's why I cried. And that's if there's going to be an emotional response when we worship, it should be from that which is drawn directly from God's word and his promises that comfort our aching heart and our grieving conscience. That is why the hymnody of the church will always be better than whatever the pop culture of American Christianity is coming up with today. If there's any songs you want to see reviewed on Worship Wars, drop a comment below. Uh, based on a comment below on the last Worship Wars, I am working on a different version of Worship Wars where we're going to compare the actual liturgy of the church to the actual, I don't know, program of mainline American Protestant worship. So that was a great comment. Looking forward to working on that. And until next time, may God richly bless you. And the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.